Um, right, OK, so we're going to fly straight into this. I was watching the game late last night, Saturday night, Manchester United against Arsenal. And um, look, I think that pre-season games are always pre-season games, funnily enough. It's about fitness. But Eric Ten Hag said himself in a press conference on Friday that there is no such thing as friendly games. And Manchester United certainly made the bigger impact. Now, of course, uh, Arsenal were a, a very good side last season. And I think they will probably be a very good side next season. But they are not in that situation, I don't think yet, where they can just cruise into a season without hard work, especially in the season that's going to happen. I thought last night there was a couple of things that stood out to me, Arsenal fans, and I'd love to get your thoughts and everybody else's thoughts on this. Um, first of all, um, I know you're in America and they're famous for their fast food, but uh, Arsenal, to me, last night uh, reflected an onion ring. There was a little going on in the middle. Uh, I know that they've got Declan Rice to come in um, and he did play last night, but that wasn't the real Declan Rice. But I, I felt that Manchester United just dominated. Uh, young Maynou in that midfield, Mount and Bruno, they, they dominated Arsenal in the midfield. And Arsenal just looked like a team that, yes, it's pre-season, but very reliant on Saka. Wasn't particularly impressed with Nketiah up front again. And obviously, I think that, that that had a massive impact on Arsenal's title run last year when Jesus was out injured. And uh, Martinelli looked quite lively. But the midfield was the problem for Arsenal. And I just wonder whether Arteta is going to go down this road of playing Declan Rice, Havertz and Odegaard, because I think they'll get overrun again and again and again. And I, I know it's only pre-season, but most team, I, 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 I just would presume that he will play Partey, Rice and Odegaard. And, but then you've spent £65 million on Havertz. And I think it's interesting when you look at Havertz because, uh, all right, last season wasn't great. But if anybody who knows anything about Havertz, not particularly good at dribbling, doesn't really create many chances, not particularly good at recovering and, and tackling. Goals are his thing. And if you're going to play him in the midfield, you, you know, you're going to have to work hard as well. I know it's only pre-season, but I felt that that was where Arsenal came undone yesterday. They were they were they were certainly missing in those areas. And then the second thing I just uh, want to say about uh, Arsenal as well, and I would love to get some questions in. <laughs> Maynou fried rice says bomb uh, in the uh, in the live chats there. But um, this 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 hopefully will trigger a few calls because I have a very strong affection towards David de Gea in relation to I really liked him at Manchester United. But I had to acknowledge old school goalkeeper won the golden boot. Uh, sorry, the golden glove last year with the with the clean sheets and has been replaced ruthlessly by Eric Ten Hag. Watching Ramsdale last night, it was just in my head the whole night. He is not a modern goalkeeper. We've seen Pep Guardiola go in and, you know, make loads of goalkeeper changes. We've seen Klopp bring Allison in. We've now seen Ten Hag remove the best goalkeeper in the league in relation to clean sheets to bring in a ball playing goalkeeper. Aaron Ramsdale is a very good shot, st shot stopper and I do like him. But when you look at him, I think last season passes per 90, he was 13th in the league. The top five being Alisson, Edison, Raya, Martinez at Villa and Leno who left Arsenal. Um, coming for crosses, um, um, it was uh, Martinez number one, Neto two, uh, Raya was number four, Gator was number three and, um, Second bottom for Ramsdale. Save percentage, 12th in the league, uh, Ramsdale, with Raya number one. I tell you what, you look at these stats. I don't know why no one's bought David Raya, by the way, by, from Brentford, because he's just there in absolutely everything. But look, Ramsdale's a good goalkeeper, and you can't read everything from stats. But I don't think he's a modern goalkeeper. And it's heard people saying things like Ten Hag's following the blueprint of Arteta. Um, I don't think Arteta's following the blueprint of Ten Hag, who is following the blueprint of Pep, that you need in the modern game a goalkeeper that uh, can play on the edge of the box, play between the lines, um, and is more than just a shot stopper. And I, and I wonder about Ramsdale. I like Ramsdale, and I, I think Arteta will stick with him. But is that an error, especially when he makes the mistakes like he did yesterday? I think he should have made both saves there, but it is pre-season. But I think there's, uh, there's certainly something to look at there from an Arsenal point of view. And uh, I'd be very interested to see uh, how that develops because we had it at United for the last half of the season where it was constant barrage from fans about David De Gea and he did win. And, and, and look, Ramsdale got 14 clean sheets last year, but it wasn't enough for David De Gea. He got 17 and has still been replaced. So does a top side, and I'll pose that question, does a top side these days need these modern goalkeepers who not only save shots, 
but they're quick off their line, they're confident on the ball, and not only confident on the ball, but they'll actually construct attacks from the last line of defence. And I don't know that um, that Ramsdale does that for Arsenal at the moment. Maybe it's something he needs to improve on, but you look at him statistically last season, and he's not in anywhere near the... Uh, the, the, the top five in relation to that. Um, in relation to Manchester United, myself, I thought they played really well last night. There, obviously, Anana didn't play, and I suppose that's where you look at that game last night. Arsenal, it is pre season, and as much as it pains me to say it, I am a big fan of what Arteta's done at Arsenal, and I do predict they'll have a good season next year, but they're not going to be an unknown quantity. Everyone knows what Arsenal are about now. So it's that ed- added pressure. I know they didn't win the league, but everyone knows they're a good team now. Last season, they sort of caught people out by surprise and were brilliantly consistent. Next season, no one's going to be caught by surprise. So there's an added pressure to Arsenal. And they looked like they were a little bit unsure of themselves last night. It's only pre-season, like I say, but Manchester United seemed to have their tails up. They seemed... It helped having a young player in Maynard in the midfield. He was enthusiastic. Casemiro and Rashford didn't play till the second half, but Bruno was good. Jaden Sancho down the middle got a goal. Noah Nana in goal. Tom Heaton in goal. He's going to come in and make a big difference as well. So United just seemed to have better momentum. And Martinelli had a couple of chances. He should have scored early on. But And, and as I say, I just want to keep saying it is pre-season, but um, we, will, uh, we will obviously see how that develops out because... There's a few teams out there as well. I saw Chelsea win last night, 4-3 against Brighton. A good result for Chelsea. Again, it's only pre-season, but this is why I posed the question as well. If you could buy one player for your team now before the start of the season, I'm sure Liverpool fans will say a midfielder. Chelsea fans might say a goalkeeper or let's get the Casido deal done. But I look at that Chelsea side and I just don't think it's, it's ready to go yet. I don't. I look at it and I think, are they really a threat for top four? They're a massive unknown quantity and that, can be useful if you look at Arsenal last year. And also if you look at what Ten Hag did in his first year, there's hope for Chelsea uh, on both cases of Arsenal and Man United last year. I think Chelsea could potentially replicate that. But I look at their team and I just think, mm, I'm not 100% sure that that, they're, that, they're, that they, they look ready. And this was the same problem they had last year with Todd Bowley because... They did a lot of business. They spent a lot of money, but it, it seemed a little bit haphazard, a little bit all over the place. And I do look at that Chelsea side and I'm surprised they have. I'm just going to throw it out there because of the, the, the research I'd done on Ramsdale for last season. I'm very surprised no one's gone for David Rea. I know stats can lie, but uh, he he as a Premier League goal. He's done it in the Premier League as well. I'm really surprised nobody's gone for him because he, he's, he's so good in so many different areas. And it is a big step up from Brentford, of course. Uh, on transfer news, Zahar to Galatasaray. I want to say, get those calls in, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm having my say on a lot of different things here. I want to get yours. 03717 uh, We'll start taking some of your calls in a moment. But uh, breaking news that uh, Wilfred Zahar will leave Crystal Palace after all those years to sign for Galatasaray. Disappointing. Really disappointing. I think the... The move is for the player. It's like it's like a lot of these players that are going to the Saudi Arabian League. It's up to them what they want to do. And nobody walks in their shoes apart from them. But I do think that with the Saudi Arabian League, you can sort of see that players are doing it for money. And it's a lot of money. Uh, I don't know what the wages are involved with Wilfred Zahar, but I think he is a loss to the Premier League. And we, 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 we should never be so arrogant as thinking the Premier League is just about the traditional top six. Wilfred Zahar at Crystal Palace, many a night on a match of the day or, or, or a highlight show, you, you, the Crystal Palace come on and you'll see Zahar do something absolutely incredible. So I think it's a shame that he's he's going to, because I think he must be about 30 now. So we probably won't see him back in the Premier League, certainly not at his best. So it's a goodbye to the Premier League from Wilfred Zahar. And it is, it's, it's a somewhat surprising one. Not that players haven't gone and played in Turkey before, but I'd like to have seen him play in the Premier League, especially with so many players heading off to Saudi Arabia at the moment. But um, Jason says, forget Zaha, Harvey Barnes to Newcastle is the news of the day, uh, says Jason on TalkSport YouTube there. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how Harvey Barnes does at Newcastle. I think this is a very Eddie Howe type of signing. And I'm not so sure which way it goes. I mean, I, I, controversial or not, I think Eddie Howe won't be the manager of Newcastle in a couple of years. I don't think the Callum Wilsons, the Dan Burns will be at Newcastle in a couple of years. And some people take offence of that. But 
it's only logic when you look at the blueprints, quite literally, of Manchester City. You don't keep Mark Hughes. You don't keep um, Richard Dunn and Mika Richards and Simon Island and all these players. You, 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 if you have the money to compete for trebles and Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues, then you end up with Champions League managers and all of, and, and, and everything that comes with that. The only way Eddie Howe will be here in two or three years is if he wins the Champions League and he wins the Premier League. And that's the challenge and he'll be aware of that. And that is why I think Harvey Barnes is a very Eddie Howe type of signing. Trippier, Dan Burn, as I've mentioned, Harvey Barnes. They're the sort of players that Eddie Howe highlights, brings in and takes them to another level. And it could well work again. But at some point, Newcastle will get into the situation where they're starting to buy bigger players than Harvey Barnes. But I think it's a, it's a reasonable signing for them. And um, it'd be interesting to see how it works out.